welcome back to Roy on Rescue for this special um, edition of the new 2010 ECC ILCOR and American Heart Association updates and recommendations. Uh, we've already had quite a few people calling in, emailing in, asking for explanation, interpretation, um, how to actually implement the changes, when they have to implement the changes. So I've decided to actually do a multi-part um, series in conjunction with ProTrainings.com and the Roy on Rescue uh, video blog uh, show. And we're going to basically work our way through many of the top uh, changes, now, all of the top changes that are going to apply to not only the healthcare provider level basic life support certification programs as an instructor and as a learner, but also layperson level CPR and first aid and what those changes mean. We'll probably even try to work our way into advanced life support if we have the time um, and there's enough interest. So stand by for all of that. But in this first short episode, I really want to make one thing perfectly clear. Um, and hopefully this will be very helpful, especially for those of you who are actively educating and training. None of these changes actually go into effect mandatorily until next year. So there's always a phase in whenever there's a release of these guidelines. Um, I had one really, really conscientious instructor call me and say, hey, look, I got a class coming up in a day or two. What are we doing about this? Do I have to actually change it today? Do I have to plan on changing it to the compression only for lay people and untrained? Um, which they, there's not been a lot of changes between the hands only and um, and what we're going towards, except for now we're, we're outlining that there's going to be compressions first. Uh, and I'll get to all of that. I don't want to put the heart, the cart before the horse. Um, and I understand, you know, whenever there's a huge release like this, technology is moving at light speed. Um, you know, I know, I understand from what you're telling me and what I've seen myself, they released a lot of information that's confusing a lot of people. And even as an instructor level, we've not really gotten the, the how to, execute the new changes yet. So rest assured, keep training as if you're following the latest 2005 guidelines. I believe that you're going to fall in line with that. Um, that's always been the policy in the past. And, um, and again, remember, these are recommendations based on some science, but believe me, after looking at the science, a lot of it is undetermined. It's sketchy at best. We don't have a lot of good, large studies to, to base some of these changes on. They've been very small. Um, we do know one thing. All of us know this. Artificial resuscitation buys time. Any way you slice it, any way you serve it, if you can compress the heart and circulate some form of oxygenated blood to the brain and to the heart, we're going to buy more time than if we simply let the person remain in fibrillation or in, in some state of non-circulation. So none of it is going to hurt a dead person. It's all going to help. But for now, um, I only have a few minutes to really release this first section, but I wanted to make sure to clarify that. If you got classes coming up, stay the course. Just keep teaching the way you have been teaching until your regional directors or other people tell you otherwise. But the rollout's going to happen. Uh, if you're a pro trainings instructor, Continue teaching by the 2005 guidelines until we actually implement or execute the changes. Uh, I'm going to be going to the Chicago update that's coming up in November along with our compliance manager. And so um, I, I've, you know, I'm going to see what happens there. But um, in the future episodes, we're going to be covering, see if I can pull my list here. Uh, I'm going to be covering topics. And as you see in the, the intro, I want this to be a commentary as well, um, but the changes are going to include uh, things like um, dispatchers and how they're going to handle the compression only versus the, uh, the rescue breathing along with the 30 compressions. Um, what should dispatchers provide as way, in way of CPR instructions based on the latest ECC ILCOR recommendations? Um, activation of emergency response systems, there's changes in that. Believe it or not, there's changes in cricoid pressure during basic life support. Any of you that are in advanced life support, you know as well as I do, cricoid pressure is normally used uh, when intubating a patient. Um, 
I, I do remember that they, they said from time to time, uh, cricoid pressure might be beneficial for controlling regurgitation um, and, and keeping air out of the stomach. But that's, anyways, I'll, I'll update you on that as well. Uh, there is an emphasis on chest compressions, obviously. There's going to be some deep discussion on that. I really want to throw this out here. There's not a lot of areas for us to dialogue within worldwide. And I think that if you, like me, have um, healthcare professional level training, especially advanced cardiac life support, physiology, cardiology, there's got to be some questions rattling around in your mind and in your heart about what these changes mean and are they going to be beneficial to the patients. And I'd kind of like to open some of that up for discussion. We, Of course, we're going to follow the recommendations and, and hope that they are good. Uh, change in CPR sequence to CAB rather than ABC, and I, um, I'll get into that. The elimination of look, listen, and feel for even healthcare provider level CPR providers. Uh, chest compression rates of at least 100 per minute. That differences from around 100 a minute. And then uh, chest compression depth as well as team resuscitation, how to do two-person two or three-person CPR. <clears throat> Community lay rescuer AED programs. In hospital use of AEDs. AED use in infants now as well as children, um, and then shock first versus CPR first. I think that pretty much summarizes really the big percentage of what the changes had to do with in basic life support, BLS, CPR. Um, I'm excited to start in embarking on this. I, I am hearing a lot of buzz out there, and I think it's time for us to open this up so that we can tap into technology to be able to start this video blog and forum to be able to really start to um, understand why we're making changes, when to make the changes, how to implement, and when to argue the point. So from Roy on Rescue, I'm looking forward to this. I hope to start this release as early as tomorrow. And we'll start putting these out as part one, part two, and so on. Um, so until tomorrow, uh, if everything goes okay, keep up the good work. Again, train per your normal standards until you get the official word from your training center or your regional faculty that you're actually to implement the new changes. Um, and then go forth and rescue as always. So take care, have a good time, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.